How come Mario's the only one that blinks? How come Peach and Bowser are incapable of blinking? Eh, whatever. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. Coops, my lad. Are you telling me that you're going with Mario? Um, that's right, Dad. I'm going to continue traveling with Mario. And then I'm, well, I'm going to come back a strong Koopa, like you, Dad. Except it will get eaten. Nicely said, young Koops. That's my boy. But always remember this, you are my son, Koops, and I am your father. Koops, my sweet, I'll be right here waiting for you to prove yourself. Ahem, may I just add, if anything happens, you can always come home, Koops. Don't you ever forget that, this village will always be your home. Okay, thank you everyone. Well, I'm off. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mario. You know farewells. So where are we going? Let's head back to Rogueport. Remember, Mario? The bearer of the magical map shall unfurl it before the thousand-year door. When this is done, the star shall guide the bearer to the crystal star with pure light. But it didn't stop there. Each crystal star shall point to the next. That's what the books say. Which means if we take the crystal star we found back to the thousand year door. So, that means the location of the next crystal star will appear on that magic map? Exactly! Come on, let's go! So, we got our objective return to the thousand year door and find out our next location. But before we do that, there are some things we could do in Pedalburg now that we have the paper thin ability. Like, get this badge that has been taunting us for oh so long. The Mega Rush Partner Badge. Increase attack power by 5 when your partner's in peril. I think that's the badge we got from the random enemy drop, so this is kind of useless to us. But we just go through here again. Yeah, it's very infuriating. We could just, like, jump over the fence or anything like that. Very offensive, if I do say so myself. But, yeah, we are done here in Pedalburg. There's nothing else left to, for us to do. For the time being, we may return someday. Who knows? Unless... Well, my foreshadowing was just way too obvious, in which case we all knows now. Speaking of nose, hello, big nose handsomeness. Just get on out of here. So sad that we're leaving this place. Uh, I think the toast says something different. It's actually kind of funny. Hey, I gotta say, all I do is play Nintendo GameCube. Best system ever, am I right? Yeah, it's the best GameCube. It's the Yeah, the GameCube's the best GameCube ever. No, it's my favorite console. Yeah, I think so too. Anyway, I saved up for a new game, the sequel to Paper Mario. I just got started, but it's a blast so far. A blast! Try it for yourself and see. Uh, I will, if I ever get the chance. But yeah, like, in all seriousness, I am getting the chance right now, and it's just such a weird feeling. I've been waiting to do this LP for so long, I'm really happy that I'm finally LPing it. It's such a good time so far. And hello! Something wrong, Mario? You're, um, shaking. Are you feeling alright? Yeah, this thing in Rain Tone is like a Mario World song, which is funny. Uh-huh. That's a new mailbox SP, isn't it? Wow, neat. Did you get some mail? My dearest Mario, I send this letter in the hope that it reaches you safely. I am being held against my will in some strange place. Though I do not know where I am, I remain unharmed and in relative comfort. Those who have captured me seem to be after the map I sent you earlier. They may be hoping to use it to find objects they call the Crystal Stars. I do not know what they are planning, but I have a feeling it is not anything positive. Mario, please collect these Crystal Stars before they do. You must! They are already aware that you have the map, so please be very careful. And please, don't worry about me, Princess Peach. Wow, you got mail from a princess, that's so cool. So, anyway, she's unhurt. That's good, at least. But I didn't like the sound of those kidnappers looking for the crystal stars as well. So, Mario's aware that Peach has been kidnapped, as if we actually needed to be told that. Like, how Toadsworth was all like, I guess we should just assume the worst. She's been kidnapped, and I probably shouldn't fight this guy. So, whenever you finish a chapter, you're going to get significantly less star points for fighting enemies. So, it's really not in my best interest to do this fight. I could just go ahead and run away if I wanted to, but I'll just finish it up for the heck of it. Why not? Let's get rid of this guy, and then Koops could go ahead and attack. That Goomba, I don't know if I ever explained it, but Koops can only attack enemies that are right in the front of the party. Um, unless it's flying, they could skip over them, but he can only attack the ones that are right in front, just like when using Mario's hammer. Uh, we get three stars! Yes, we can! And speaking of the star power, it actually will be in my best interest to show off our new ability, Earth Tremor. Every time we get a crystal star, we get a new ability, so I guess this would be a good time to show it off. 
I know it's only one enemy with one HP, but whatever. You caused me to do an unnecessary fight, so for that reason, you shall pay! Earth Tremor! I still got it? Do I still got it or what? Yeah, I stinking do. Does a ton of crazy damage to all enemies on the field. And the higher the stage bounces, you could actually have a chance of hitting the enemies that are in the air. So I guess it wasn't a complete waste of time to show that fight, but I'm gonna try to avoid the fights uh, from here on out because they're not really worth our time. And as we all see, we, as we've seen throughout the past previous episodes, the past previous episodes, I am a pro at battling, so I don't need any extra star points or health or anything like that. No need to worry in that regard. So we're just gonna head on out of here and find ourselves a new location. But now that we have some new abilities with us, we could also go around Rogueport and see if there are any new things that open up to us. So let's go back. Oh, Rogueport! I remember as if it were only yesterday. Wow, that was great. Oh, I was hoping for a speedrunning tactic where it would actually like let me go back to the beginning of the area, but no. Just ride this over here, all slow like. Okay, get in here. And we gotta make our way back around. Uh, just hit this guy if we can, thank you. I don't know why I fought him when I said I wasn't gonna fight any more enemies. Now that we have the paper thin ability, we don't actually need to, actually, we've never gone through this pipe, have we? I was gonna say we could uh, skip the shortcut, but I was thinking of this little platform over here that we used to get down to that pipe, but this pipe we have not been through yet, so let's see what is down here. ZOMG takes us to the background. If we go over here, just jump across, we could enter this one building. And hello, who is this person? Hello, welcome, I'm Merli, underground, cute as can be, a fortune teller, that is me. Yeah, so all the fortune tellers make a return in this game, but they all have different designs, so I can never like remember who's who, because they always get drastically changed up through every Paper Mario game. Lucky for you, coming here, I tell fortunes, have no fear. Let my mystic power tell of days to come, more as well, for luck sits on my spells. What do you say, Mr. Guy, want to give it a try? If you remember, Merli was the merchant, or the, not the merchant, but like the sage, that gave us the spell that would help us in battle every now and again. So she is the most useful of the sages, in my opinion, and I am definitely going to be using her services. That's good, that's great, choose the path to fate. Choose your path to fate, heart. Which path do you want to choose, the special path, the normal path, or the cheap path? The more pricey the path you choose, the uh, longer it's going to stay in effect. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the special path. Okay, that's fine by me. So ready, ready for me? Okay, here we go, heart. Hey look, it's a GameCube. <laughs> I go just I, if I see any sort of cube, I'm just like, it's a GameCube. It's like when people look at any sort of round object and be like, hey look, it's like the Death Star. That was a lot slower of a spin cycle than I remember it being. My mystic power can make you smile. In battle, you'll win with style. Even if nasty foes arrive, you'll be fine since my fortune will thrive. Okay, come again. See you soon. See you then. Goodbye, heart. So the spell could do a random variety of things in battle. It could sometimes double your attack power, double your defense. It could double the coins you get at the end of battle. It could even double the star points you get at the end of the battle. It is very, very worth your time to get it. So I recommend you just get it activated right now and renew it whenever it runs out. The special path might last you for like about half the game actually, so it's pretty good in that regard. And isn't good that I missed that jump, but no, I was planning that in advance. I wanted to miss the jump so that I could show you that I could just go through here. But before that, I believe we're gonna to wanna to go to the uh, badge merchant, Dazzle, and see what we could buy with our new star pieces. I kinda of regret buying this uh, things from it right away because I kinda of wanted to see, it would be easier to keep track of my star pieces if I just kept them all and didn't spend any of them. But we have nine of them, which allows us to... Oh, we can actually afford the quick change badge already. Allow your ally to attack even after changing partners, which is going to be very useful for me since I'm going to be switching out all the time for the tattle stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that right now. Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to check something real quick, but we're going to go ahead and trade this. It costs 7 BP, so it's not exactly something we could equip anytime soon, but I'd rather get it sooner rather than later. Hey guy, come now. Can't we trade some more? No, because I only have one star piece. What? Changed your mind? Thanks to you, my guy. My star piece collection has grown. So, now that's taken care of, we got the quick change badge. But at what cost? 
It is very stinking expensive. So even if we de-equip all of our- Oh, remind me to de-equip that. I hate having those things equipped. Um, we got that taken care of. Oh, what's in here? I don't think I ever checked. Uh, no, we did. This is one of the merchants again. I don't know why I keep calling them merchants. They're sages or whatever, but I'm just going to keep going and head on down this pipe now that we got things taken care of. Pew, pew, pew. Speed running tactics. I don't even need to walk around the thing anymore. You just go down here like that. Oh, I love the paper thin ability. Uh, there's nothing for you in this cage in case you're wondering. And in here, it's something that we can't do yet. So now I'm going to bother showing you. I'm going to leave you in mystery. Can't show you all the things this place has to offer. Yeah, Underground Rogue Corp grows more and more vast as the game goes on because you got all these different abilities that let you progress through different areas. Hello, Spinia. Hello, other Spinia. 69! <sighs> whatever, I'm never going to live the story down saying I didn't know what a 69 was, but whatever, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Just climb up here. Unfortunately, we don't have any speed running tactics that allow us to skip out on this paper airplane thing. I remember first time. I'm sure everyone. Wow. Wow. That was amazing. As I was trying to say, I remember first time playing this game. I was horrible at the paper airplane thing. I was stuck on puzzle for so long just because I couldn't fly the stinking thing. But now it's just like so stinking easy. Uh, whatever. The joys of getting better at video games and stuff. And he ruined our 69. How lame. Whatever, gonna walk all the way back up. Go up here. And fly across. Butterflies fly away, I say. Butterflies fly away. Are you getting sick of me talking about the paper thin ability yet? Because if you go through here with the paper thin ability, you can jump up this trampoline, and another paper airplane platform is available to you. We fly across the entire room, make it over here, and jump up this thing. You could get yourself another shine sprite. Very, very good. As for this room over here, it's very spooky and mysterious. Ooh, what does this say? Oh, this is their um, record thing. If you remember in Mario's house, there was a sign that kept track of like certain uh, thingies. Oh, there's a star beast thing there, so we could keep track of it through that thing, I guess. So it keeps track of uh, deepest level reach, uh, record power bounces, which we haven't done yet, and star beast found 12 out of 100. So if you want to keep track of your stats like that, then you can come back here and check and do so. I thought, so, I thought it also kept track of like first strikes and enemy first strikes, but I think that might just be the first Paper Mario game. But yeah, what is this? Danger, do not enter. This pipe is the entrance to the pit of 100 trials. First attack and bump attacks badges won't work, so beware! This is the ultimate challenge in this game. Anyone who plays Paper Mario knows of the Pit of 100 Trials. It is a 100 floor dungeon where you have to fight 100 groups of enemies in a row. Without saving, only your pure strength and your items that you come in with are allowed to be used, basically. So, I would not recommend doing that right now, obviously. But I would recommend you go back here and get this star piece. So, I do not recommend doing that now. We will be doing it at some point, but right now, I'm just going to skip out on it because it's impossible to do right now. And it's impossible. I'm sure some people have done it like level 5 before, but I'm not one of those persons. Um, alright, Mario. Hold up that crystal star. The location of a crystal star has been recorded on your magical map. Hey, uh, Mario, look there. The next crystal star showed up on the map. But, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a clue where that is. Oh. Um, I think maybe we should take it to Professor Frankly and let him look at it. Uh. 
I see. I see. Crystal clear. Get it crystal clear? Um, so can you tell us where the next crystal star is or not? It is in the Boggly Woods. The second crystal star is inside a great tree there. A great tree in the Boggly Woods, huh? About those woods, I think some odd creatures live there. Hmm, we've seen one of those before, if you remember. But, well, real quick, Frankly said that the crystal star is located inside of a great tree. How is it that he's able to pinpoint the exact location of the crystal star on the map? If that's the case, don't you think he could have warned us about the singing dragon in the castle and all that jazz before we went to Petalburg? Yeah, frankly, you're holding out on us. If memory serves, there's a pipe beneath town that leads to these woods. Um, Professor Frankly, you should probably know. It's about Princess Peach. Mr. Mario got an email from her just recently. Her Highness said that the guys who kidnapped her are also hunting crystal stars. Oh, and she says she doesn't even know where she's being held. Yeah. Uh oh, if Princess Peach's kidnappers are also looking for the crystal stars, what could they hope to achieve? Could the treasure be, oh, too many unknowns? Unfortunately, the only clues we have to rely on are that crystal stars and that map. Um, I guess all we can do is head to Boggly Woods to find that next crystal star. Yes, I recommend you do just that and find it before the princess's captors do. But don't be hasty. If you're low on items or health, drop by the shop or the inn first. I'll keep researching to learn more about crystal stars and the ancient treasure. Now this trash can right here, if you didn't get the tattle information for Hooktail or the Golden Fuzzy, they would be in here, like I said. Um, any enemies that you can't fight more than once, they will have their tattle logs up here, here in this trash can if you did not get them yourself. So the game is nice in that regard and making sure that if you do want to complete the tattle log at some point in your life, you are able to do so without having to repeat your playthrough or something like that. And hey, look who it is! It's Luigi! Uh, sorry for letting you get eaten by Hooktail, buddy. Well, hey, big brother, fancy meeting you here. What a coinky dink. Eh, who, me? Well, bro, I'm on an adventure. I have to rescue Princess Eclair of the Waffle Kingdom. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a bad scene, all right. She's been kidnapped by the evil Chestnut King. Oh, if you got to know, I met with some Waffle Kingdom cabinet members the other day. It was pretty crazy, bro. Want to hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. So this is sort of... Luigi's own segment, but I like how Luigi's uh, interlude in every chapter doesn't involve just him on his own. It has to have Mario in it because Luigi can't be in the spotlight on his own. That'd be too much a uh, spotlight for him. But yeah, we'll hear him out in his story. Why not? Hey, sounds good to me. Which part of my story do you want to hear, bro? You'll get a new in you'll get a new integration of his story throughout every single chapter, and quite honestly, it's some of the most hilarious dialogue in the entire game. So I'll gladly listen to it. Waffle Kingdom letter. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here it goes. My big brother, that's you, bro, got a letter from Princess Peach and took off. Left behind as usual, I was cooking a snack at home when another letter arrived. We don't, we don't get so much mail, so I was thinking, huh, this is what the letter said. Sirs, my name is Clave. I am a ca cabinet minister of the far-off Waffle Kingdom. Our land has been attacked by the Chestnut King, who took our Princess Eclair. I ask, nay, beg you for your assistance. The Waffle Kingdom needs your skills. I humbly request your prompt response, sirs. Sincerely, Crepe. Well, I don't remember it ex exactly, but I think it went something like that. With Mario, that's you, bro, gone. It fell to me to answer this plea. He, he hesitating only a teensy bit, I headed to the Waffle Kingdom to investigate. Oh no, first I wrote a note to myself about what I was cooking, then I left. Once I reached the Waffle Kingdom, I met Minister Clape, who filled me in. The Chestnut King, who had kidnapped Princess Eclair and vanished. Apparently, though, some oracle about uh, said a marvelous compass could locate her. This marvelous compass has been broken into seven parts by an ancient curse. And those parts have been scattered across the land. Can you believe it, bro? Each part of the marvelous compass was said to point to the next. And since no one of one of the parts was embedded in the tiara worn by the princess, I surmise that I once I collected all the parts, I defined her. Smart, huh? The minister gave me the compass base spoken of in Waffler Fables. When it activated, the entire thing lit up, indicating the deep south. It was pointing me toward the Rumble Bump Volcano in the Pudding Continent. 
So yeah, here I am. I'm sailing out to for a rogue board for the Rumble Bump Volcano. It's probably gonna be very dangerous, but I gotta rescue that princess. Very, very interesting. I sing and love that. If you wanna hear what I've been up to, just come and find me, okay? I'll be around. I sing and love that he's on his own adventure, like, trying to save Princess Eclair of the Waffle Kingdom. Unfortunately, it doesn't become anything more than just a story. We just get to hear Luigi talk about it, but I would honestly love a game in which we actually get to see the Waffle King. I would love a Paper Luigi game, especially like it a lot more than Sticker Star or something like that, but it's just so stinking hilarious, just the story he tells. It's very, very funny, and I wish it actually got turned into its own game in the future, but alas, that is not the case. Uh, real quick before I forget, we should probably go in here. Now that we have enough Shine Sprites, we could upgrade a party member, so we will do just that. Unfortunately, we only have four Shine Sprites, so we can only upgrade one party member for the time being, so... Uh, to go in order, or to go with the obvious choice, hmm. You know what, I'm actually gonna go with Gumbella, because I prefer her upgrade over Koops's, so... We're gonna do that. Shall I power up this partner? Shazibi! Shazubi! Shazam! Then you may go. Gumbella now has 20 HP, more HP than Mario even, which is really funny. But her new ability is Multibonk. She basically has her own power bounce, which is very, very useful. And it makes her a lot more useful than Goombario, because we had to upgrade Goombario twice before he got the Multibonk ability. And Goombella has it right off the bat, so if you're really a fan of power bounces, then you should be A-OK -okay with using Goombella. I know a lot of people who think she's one of the best party members in the game, and I don't blame you. She is very, very useful, actually. But now that we got that taken care of, what are you doing outside of the shop, buddy? Hey, valued customer, your contact lens is in. Please drop by your shop. Very convenient, because we, well, we don't need to go to the west side in this specific part. Uh, we won't have to go until next chapter, but it's good to get it out of the way right now. Contact lens. An aid for poor vision. Does Mario really need this? I'm gonna need 10 coins for that contact lens. Wanna buy it, fella? Thanks, fella. I like how it was just here on display. It wasn't being held for us. Like, anyone else could have just walked in and bought it themselves. But no, we gotta go ahead and get it. And go over here, over to this lady who's still blocking the entrance for us. Did you bring my contact lens, Mr. Squishy? Yes, indeed. A contact lens? Oh, sweet relief! Thank you! Finally, the world is crisp and clear again. I can see. Oh, I'm so happy! Be careful from now on. People don't generally like having their stuff stomped on. Now, believe it or not, she's actually the chef of this game. If you go back into her house, she will actually cook items for you. She's not nearly as pleasant as Tasty from the first Paper Mario game, but she still gets the job done. Oh, so it's you again, huh, Mr. Stomp-a-Lot? Well, my name is Zesty. I may not look the, like a chef, but I'm actually quite good. If you bring me ingredients, my cooking skills burst to life and culinary magic happens. Want me to whip something up for you right now? What ingredients would you like me to cook with? And uh, we'll keep it simple. Just go ahead and give you a good old mushroom. I'll cook up your mushroom. Yes, indeed. I'm going to mix these up for you. Just wait a sec. Doodly 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 da! Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not entirely sure you'll like this, but... Go on, take it, Stompy. We got a Shroom Fry, a tasty dish made by Zesty. It plunges 6 HP and 2 FP. Anytime you feel like it, feel free to bring me stuff to cook with, okay? Now if you go ahead into your uh, journal, I think this is here from the beginning, but now if you go here and check recipes, we now have the Shroom Fry in here. There are 57 different recipes. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and fill out the cookbook. I've never done this before, but... I think it would be kind of fun if we tried doing it, so I don't know if I'll be doing the LP or maybe I'll make it into a live stream where I just get the final bits that I haven't done yet, but I would like to 100% the cookbook in this Let's Play, so I will be doing that. As for the badges, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, I'll just see how easy it is for me once we get to the end of the game. The Tetalog, I am 100%ing. Uh, you know what, I'm going so far to get 100% playthrough, so why the heck not? Oh, I gotta say real quick, the map right here, I could never... For the life of me, read it as map for some reason. Even though it's clearly just the map of stinking the crystal stars and all that jazz, I never was able to read it as map. The spacing of it, that's like a capital M, a lowercase a, and a capital P. 
I always read it as M and P. I was like, what's M and P? It was like Mario and Party? I have no idea. I could not comprehend what it meant, even though it brought me to the map. I was like, what the heck does this word? I have no idea. It was really singing dumb, but yeah, I think I've just decided that we're going to do a 100% playthrough of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Wish me luck! Uh, I like how they fell asleep. Might as well just give them, uh, there's really no reason not to give her the things right now that could be cooked, so we're going to give her a honey syrup, see what that gets turned into. Uh, you have to watch this segment every single time, unfortunately. But it's still funny and whatnot. Got this cool little jingle. And things get set on fire. And we get ourselves a fresh juice. Replenishes 5 HP, or 5 FP and cures poison. So we basically just get the FP, or the poison attribute. Not super helpful, but it's something, I guess. Uh, one last thing for the road. We'll have you cook up a fire flower. I'm not entirely sure if this works, but I'll see if it does. I'm not sure if it gets turned into anything, is what I'm trying to say. do li do li do Choppa, 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 choppa. Tony, Tony, choppa. And... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not entirely sure you'll like this, but... Go on, take it, Stompy. A sp oh wait, it actually was something. The black smoke made me think that it uh, failed. Yummy soup made by Zest here. Punches 4 HP and 4 FP. So if you like it, feel free to bring me stuff to cook with, okay? There are things that she cannot cook, so the mistakes from the first Paper Mario game do make a return. Uh, that is a recipe you need for the cookbook, though, so... Uh, it punches 4 HP and 4 FP, so we turn an attacking item into a healing item. It's kind of cool. But yeah, I believe like, we gave her a power block to cook with, then it would get turned into a mistake, so... If you want that for the cookbook, then go ahead and do that, but I'll go save that for a different time. Uh, we can read the bulletin board. Hooktail of Petal Meadows defeated by Brave Hero. Must have been a tough guy. And go check the graffiti corner. Graffiti corner. While looking for badges in Hooktail's castle, I ran into a spiffy mustached fellow. The heart-stealing thief. So that's clearly Miss Mouse. So you actually get to see other characters that we met along the way. They leave their little message on here, which is kind of funny. This guy appears, uh, well, he's going to be here for the rest of the game, I'm pretty sure, but... Um, every time you leave and come back, he's got new inventory. Let's see what he has right now for us. Hey, 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 oh, I've got all the hottest new products right here. Look no further. And yes, he has the most marvelous mustache in all of the kingdom. You got the fevered look for of a man with a mind for goods. Want to buy something? Uh, we got the Ultra Shroom, which costs 120 coins. We could afford it, but I don't want to right now. Attack FXG. It changes the sound effect of Mario's attacks. I don't really care. W Emblem. It changes Mario's clothes into Wario's clothes. I will get this at some point because it's a really cool badge, but it costs 360 coins. I wonder if this... Was the Xbox 360 even a thing at this point? I don't think it was, but I always just saw this like an Xbox reference for whatever reason. And Hammerman. Increase ma uh, hammer power by one, but you lose the ability to jump, which is interesting. There's also a badge called Jump Man, which uh, does the reverse, but whatever. I would like to get the W emblem at some point, but unfortunately I can't afford it right now, so I'm just going to say no. Uh, sorry to hear that, my man. This is a limited time offer. Uh, we'll get it at some point. But now what we're going to want to do is just head upstairs back to the badge shop. Just every time you come back here, you're always going to want to go check around the town, see what new things are available to you. Very important before you head out, because when you do head out to a new, new chapter, then you're going to be in that area for quite a long time. And right now, we do not have nothing that I really want. Uh, Sleepy Stomp, which is a pretty funny badge. It makes it so you uh, enemies fall asleep after you stomp on them, which is kind of funny. Uh, happy flower. We've seen this before, I believe. None of these really interest me, so we're just gonna head out of here. So, nothing else left to do but find the bodily woods, wherever that may be. Maybe it's in the west side. Who knows? Question is, should I be showing this off now, or should I be saving it for later? Hmm. Eh, I'll give you a sneak peek of it. Look, the west side has even more grass and buildings. OMG, it's amazing. Just want to make sure this episode doesn't get too long, so for that sake, I'll save it for next time because we don't actually need to go over there. It's just good that you get that taken care of now because uh, we do need to go there in the next chapter and it'd be kind of unfortunate if it was being blocked off. So what we need to do is find the pipe that leads to the Boggly Woods. If you remember, we saw one of those little creatures uh, head into a certain area that was blocked off to us previously, but since we have the Paper Thin ability, we could go ahead and access that area now. And I think it's safe to assume that the creature is leading us in the direction that we need to go. So, let's go ahead and follow them! ZOMG! Super special awesome transition! I went through one pipe and it led me through two other pipes! Hey! Mario! You see that? That was one of the things Professor Frankly mentioned. I'm on to you now, chum! I'm going in here and chasing you down! Beep. Beep, 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 beep. 
Guess again, nerd! Nerd, leave me alone, you big manies! Um, Mario? That was uncool. Don't say stuff like that. I thought you were... nicer. Relax. Relax, little guy. We're not bullies, I swear. For real? Phew! Boy, that's good. I thought for a second I might have had an accident. Um, aren't you one of the creatures from Boggly Woods? Why are you down here? You're right, working for those x nons aren't you? You chased me here! No, it's the end! x nots What the heck are those? Sounds like tissues to the extreme or something. I never thought of that before, but yeah, it's true. x nots is our tissues to the extreme! Look, we're not here to do anything to you. So relax. Tell us what's going on, okay? Well, okay. This gang of bad guys who call themselves x came to where I live. They came inside in great trades, they're tearing me apart and causing trouble. So, I come all the way here looking for help. And yet you're afraid of anyone who comes your way, I don't get it. A bunch of bad guys in the great tree? If those are the same guys who kidnapped the princess, they want the crystal star. Now that I mention it, they did say something about some crystal star they do. But we planets don't know anything about the crystals or stars! So, could you guys help us out? Maybe chase them off? If you do, we'll give you a... Uh, what was it? The crystal star? If you do, we'll have the puny on the give you that! You just said you didn't know anything about the crystal stars, so how could you make a promise like that? I don't know what it is, but if he'll help you reclaim my tree, I'm sure the Elder will agree! So what do you say? Let's not waste any more time! I'm begging you! Oh! Um, I guess we should. I'd feel pretty bad if we didn't do anything. Plus, we do need to get the crystal stars before those X guys do. Oh, thank you so much! This is great! I'm so happy! My name is Pirio. Pleased to meet you. Well, I'll take you to where I live. Follow me, okay? It's this way! Now, real quick, that badge just reminded me that I want to go ahead and de-equip some things. We're going to get rid of the uh, multi-bounds, and I think we'll get rid of uh, happy happy heart for the time. We almost said happy fart. <laughs> uh, whatever, just going to go over here. Going to follow him like he said. Wait, hang on a second. I'm sure the PDF sent some button around here near the open secret entrance. Aha! How very convenient! Now we just head up here into the secret hole and head to the left. We could actually walk through the walls, disappear, and fly. No. We are going to get the damage dodge badge. Decrease damage by one with a guard action command. You know, now that I think about it. Oh, okay. I thought it just increased defense normally, but if it requires me to do the action command, then this isn't a very good badge for me. It was great in the first Paper Mario game since I couldn't do super guards, but since. I only do super guards, I don't actually need to equip this thing, so... Forget about that, I don't need your crummy damage dodge, I'm gonna go back to... Oh, well, do we want the power bounce now? I'm trying to remember the enemies that we're gonna see in this area. Uh, if jumping's a really good idea, but why not, we'll check it out. Gonna keep on going over here. You can get into the world speed, Puny is living by going through that pipe there. Okay, hurry, hurry! And Punio's gonna follow us around for the time being, but whatever. We are gonna end the episode off right here and start the new area in the next episode. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we are going into the Boggly Woods. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. And I just wanted to see if I could take Punio with me throughout this entire area. It seems like I can. You are stuck with me forever, chump.